I'm from a city called Milwaukee, which is a few hours north of Chicago. And uh, we are also a famous place for beer. So when I was looking around Europe and deciding where I was going to go to next, I was like, I need a beer country. Uh, so I came here. I also lived a year in the UK as well. Um, but yeah, my background, um, I'm a t I, I've been a teacher, and my uh, degree is in medieval history. So I absolutely love talking about history. Uh, and if you want to have some more information, just come on up during the tour. If you have a question, I could probably talk your ear off <laughs> about uh, the history of frogs. But what we're going to do, we're going to take about two and a half, roughly two and a half hours, and we're going to see the old town, the Jewish quarter, and part of the new town of Prague. So basically, most of the major sites uh, in, on this side of the river. Um, and our first thing we're going to check out is this astronomical clock. Did you all get a chance to see it? Not sure, you can catch it after this. It is just about the most beautiful 10 seconds of your tour in Prague. And uh, unfortunately, the astronomical clock is on the uh, most overrated tourist attractions in Europe list, which I can't believe because it's beautiful, it's historical, it's you know, a technological you know, marvel if you think about the time when it was built. So what I want to do first is convince you that the Prague Astronomical Clock is not overrated. <laughs> that is my first goal today. So what we're going to do first is we're going to walk over in front of the clock and I'll tell you a little bit of history and I'll also tell you how to read it. So yes. we can head right on over. History teacher. Oh yeah, you too. What do yep. you teach? What kind Asian, of um, Asian history. Oh, wonderful. Um, well, well, mainly Philippine history since I'm from the Philippines. <laughs> Where are you from? All right, so the astronomical clock is a tapestry of a building that is called the Old Town Wall. Staromitska Radice in Czech or less. My pronunciation is still uh, it hurts me. Uh, and most of these buildings are medieval. There is a, a Renaissance building, this orange one is a Renaissance building. And they decided that what it needed uh, in the late 1400s was a real showpiece on their town hall. So they hired a man named Master Hanouche, who was a technological genius of the 15th century here in Central Europe to build this clock. And Master Hanouche, he shows up in Prague. You know, he spends a great deal of time designing and constructing this clock. It's based on a device called an astrolabe, which was a medieval device that really only the very, very wealthy could afford that tracked the movements of the heavens in the sky. And Hanush built people start coming from, from miles around to see it. And here in the town hall, all of the frog councilmen are rubbing their hands together they're making a whole lot of money mm. off of all of the tourism and merchants that are coming here with this clock. So, thanks for hearing that. Uh, now, Hanush finished the clock in 1490. And the people in the town hall said, we need to make sure no one else ever gets a clock this wonderful in their city. Because then everyone will leave Prague to go see the new clock. So how are we going to get Hanush to not build a clock like this elsewhere? Now, they put their heads together, they came up with a plan, and they invited Hanush to a banquet one night. And they got him really strong, you know, goulash, levovice, pilsner, you know. Pilsner didn't come around actually till the 1840. <laughs> Probably wasn't Pilsner. But, um, and he finally said, oh, you guys, 
I've had a little bit too much. I need to go lie down. They said, don't worry. Go sleep it off. We've got a room prepared. And when he went to lay down, the councilman called to these two big burly guys who had been standing in the shadows all night. And they said, you know what to do. They followed Hanush into the bedroom, and they held him down, and they gouged out his eyes with hot iron pokers, and they cut off his tongue. And that way he couldn't build another clock, and he couldn't tell anyone how to build another clock. Now, he was absolutely, completely pissed off about this <laughs> turn of events. I mean, you would be, wouldn't you? So he vowed that his dying act would be to get revenge on the city of Prague. So he had his assistant lead him to the top of the inside of the clock. And just as the clock struck the hour one afternoon, he threw himself down into the iron gears of the clockwork and committed suicide. But he did destroy the mechanisms that ran the clock. And it took the city over a hundred years to find someone as skilled as Hanush that could repair it. So he got his revenge. I mean, I don't know. I might rather, you know, have a broken clock than gouged out eyes. I, I don't know who comes out the best in the story. But that's a brief to society. But how this show works, uh, every hour from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., the clock goes off, and it has been since, you know, that would have been the they fixed it, so the 16th century. Uh, there was a small period of time that the clock was destroyed uh, inside because the Nazis actually fired anti-tank grenades into this building. And I'll show you the remains of uh, that they left as a memorial on the other side. So it does have modern clockwork in it today. Horses. Oh, we've got a horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> So the show, you guys, the show every hour, those two blue doors open up, and you've got six men that file through on each side, and those are the twelve apostles. We've got these four figurines, two on each side. Uh, the skeleton, he represents, of course, death, and the other represent other fears of medieval Prague. So these two on this side, on the left, are religious. We've got one guy with a mirror. He's thinking he's looking pretty good. He represents the fear of vanity. Then the guy with the money bag over on the right, he represents the fear of greediness. But the final guy on this side, he is actually a military fear. In one way, he represents the Ottoman Turkish Empire and the fear that the people had in Central and Eastern Europe of the invasion of the Ottoman Turks, which is a very real fear. They were a hugely powerful empire, especially in the late 15th century. They laid siege to Vienna, which is not far away. Um, also, it represents the fear of the Islamic influence that would come along with the Turkish Empire. So those guys, you know, death starts to ring his bell. Ding, 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 ding. And then the other guys, they start to move their heads. They start to say no, because what do you say to the god of death? Any Game of Thrones fans here? <laughs> not today. So they're saying, not today. Give us another hour. Give us another hour on Earth. And then finally, the little chicken at the top of the clock, to finish it off, he goes, er, er. <laughs> That's the show, you guys. It's kind of amazing, in a way, if you think about it. It was built in the 15th century. And this is the only working medieval clock of its type in the entire world. There are two others that survive, but they no longer work as clocks. They're just there as, you know, beautiful pieces of art. Now, to read the clock, we actually have the 24-hour time in two different languages. And the first language is in that dark gray or a black circle, that is actually medieval Bohemian, which is a dead language. So I have yet to meet anyone who speaks medieval Bohemian. Um, but then right inside there, you'll probably recognize those, those are Roman numerals, another 24-hour clock in Roman numerals. 
also have a smaller circle right in the center with all of the signs of the zodiac. And you can see that there is a sun over there on the right hand side. That sun is over the zodiac sign that the sun is in right now. So that will change about every 28 days or so, but moving into a different phase of the sun. <laughs> we also have down at the bottom of that circle a nearly completely silver orb. And that represents the moon. And if you go out and look at the sky tonight, that is the phase of the moon in the sky. Every single day, the black covering over that silver orb moves just a little bit and showing the phase of the moon. Now above the sun, kind of off to the right, or my right, your left, there is actually a golden hand that points to the hour. So very literal, it's the hand of the clock. <laughs> and then down at the bottom, to the right of the moon, you have a star, and that is the North Star. And the North Star will be at the time that it will rise on the horizon tonight. So if you are an astrologer or an astronomer, ah. and let me tell you, Prague had the largest collection of astronomers, astrologers, scientists, and charlatans in all of Europe around 1500. They just collected them. It's very important that they knew when the North Star would rise. And then last but not least, the background of the clock is several different colors. The black is true astronomical night. So when it is nighttime, uh, the sun actually is going to be in that black sphere. As the sun rises, it moves into the orange, the light blue, and the dark blue. The sun also goes up and down that hand of the clock. So you are here on midsummer day in June. The sun is at the very, very top of that hand, and it spends almost the entire time in the blue and orange part of the sun. If you come in December, during midwinter, the sun is all the way in the middle, and it spends very little time in those blue areas. So it is telling you the time in two different languages. When to expect the North Star to rise, the phase of the moon, how many hours of daylight that you would have, and also the zodiac sign that we're in right now. Let's, does anybody think it's a little bit more impressive now? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> yep. It's absolutely amazing. Now, in the 1800s, they decided to add a second face, and that's the lower one. In the middle, there is the city of the, uh, the symbol of the city of Prague. All three of those towers are still standing. We're going to see one of them today, and the other two are on the Charles Bridge. And then on the outside of that clock is this wonderful Czech tradition. Sometimes people ask, Angela, why did you move to Prague? Well, one, beer is literally cheaper than water. <laughs> yep. And two, you get two birthdays here. You have your birthday and you have your name day. So every single day, this white outer ring turns. And if your name comes up, it is your name day, and your friends will all take you out for a beer, you'll get a little present, maybe some flowers. So it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, tradition here uh, in this part of Europe. Um, what we're going to do next, you guys, is we are going to move into Old Town Square itself, and I'm going to talk about some of the beautiful historical buildings that